So hello and welcome to this evening's edition of Unleash Hour. My name is Samuel Mwinamu Asena, uh, the founder and managing director of Optimize Institute, where we help people discover, develop and deploy their potential in every aspect of life. And uh, we also run this weekly program where we hold discussions around areas of uh, life skills, personal finance, uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, talent management. We try to have uh, discussions around those areas for the benefit of uh, both the people who are able to join us live and those who get to watch what we are doing later uh, through our YouTube channel and uh, many other platforms that God provides. So it's my great pleasure to invite you all to tonight's uh, edition of Unleash Hour, where we are discussing uh, what they don't teach at the university. And before we go any further, I would like to invite uh, Jim and Zioki to pray with us uh, as we get started tonight. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all that you have enabled us to accomplish, oh Lord, with the hours that you give us. And Lord, we pray, oh Lord, even as we come to engage, oh Lord, in this uh, discussion, oh God, we pray that we may sharpen each other, oh Father. We may learn from each other's experiences, oh Father. And that, Lord, we may all go away with something new, something fresh, oh Father, that we will apply in our own lives. We pray even for the speaker, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for taking the time to pray with us. Um, so we, I will, I will start off the conversation uh, from uh, where I am, uh, but uh, I will be inviting us to get in some input because I believe that uh, we all have some experience and uh, we all have gone through the formal education system and we know what some of the issues are that uh, that system misses out on, which we come to learn uh, sometimes much later in life. Oh, great. I can see the good doctor is just has just joined the conversation. Wow. Dr. Rueza. Hey, sure. Sorry, sorry. That's <laughs> really a hassle. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, sorry, Something sorry, sorry. I can imagine. Uh, I can imagine what was going on. <laughs> hey, sorry, sorry. I hope it will not disturb again. Okay. Uh, it is. It is well. We believe that uh, you have joined us at the right time, and uh, definitely you'll be able to share something mm. as we continue. Yes. yes. So. Um, I give you I give you two three minutes to take a breath and then uh, we can uh, dive right into the conversation. Is that okay? Okay. All right. All right. And in those uh, few moments, I can see Pastor Barnabas Achoki joined us. Uh, Pastor, you can say hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, sorry, I'm in the hospital, so I'm, I'm, I'm not an emergency, so I'm just uh, following so as I wait. Okay. Yeah. W w whatever the emergency, we pray that uh, all turns out well for you. Yes, thank you. In, thank in you. Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, many of us uh, have gone through the formal education system and we know and we are familiar with some of the uh, things that uh, actually miss out from the whole conversation. And uh, you realize that uh, some of these things, you actually get to learn about them. Huh, Dr. Ari has disappeared again. Is it a network issue? I don't know. 
let's hope he can uh, get back in. So um, we we all go through the system and there are very many things that uh, we are able to pick up along the way. So the system is not completely useless, but uh, there's also a lot that you get to realize you are not able to connect with. Yeah, there's a lot that you find you're not able to connect with, uh, a lot that uh, you can't figure out that requires um, an extra uh, level of uh, skill that requires you to actually go into what I would call self-education. So um, for me, one of the things that was big uh, that I learned after I left the university is that it's um, it's never it's it's never as straightforward as uh, we we were made to believe. You know, we 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 were sold we were sold a certain uh, belief when we were in school that you know uh, you will. You, you you work hard, uh, study, get those good grades, and uh, when once that is done, you, you're going to get a good job, and everything will uh, pan out well. Re remember, I remember this song that uh, used to be done a lot when we were in primary school or thereabouts, where uh, it would say, "So many vijana." Namuongeze pia BD. Mwisho wa kusoma, mutapata kazi nzuri sana. I know, I know almost everyone who's here has, has heard that song. Uh, and, and that was kind of the story that we were sold. And the truth of the matter is that uh, in, in, in those days, that was enough. In those days, uh, a, lo a lot of what you needed was, uh, you know, you, you get yourself a good education, you, you pass. And uh, Gideon will tell us, uh, because in, in those days, I think um, actually companies would come to the university to recruit <laughs> uh, people to join companies and other organizations who come to the university to recruit people to join their workforce and all that. That is not happening as much nowadays. Yes, there's there's a few uh, that uh, show up along the way, but that is not the reality for a majority of graduates. A majority of graduates are forced to actually uh, have to find their way through after they have gone through all that. So uh, for me, one of the things that I would say uh, I, I missed from uh, the education system would be how, you know, um, the fact that nobody prepared me for how much work I needed to put in actually after I come from uh, uh, college in order to get a footing or gain a footing actually in the in the in the in the, in the corporate world or uh, in the world of employment and all that uh, so to speak so for me that uh, became a gap and became something that i had to learn uh, the hard way and push myself beyond i i just realized that uh, getting done with the college is just uh, one hurdle you have uh, cleared there is uh, a, a thousand and one others that you need to work through if you're going to actually experience success. So maybe, uh, I don't know who wants to say something around that. As you can see, we are still uh, having an issue with the doctor rejoining the meeting. So we can continue this discussion for the duration that we can. And uh, of course, when the time uh, is out, we come to a close. So um, who would love to say something about 
uh, today's topic. Maybe we start with Gideon. What what oh. what was your experience, and uh, what can you say to someone today who is uh, either at the university or recently left the university? Or, or someone who is just going through life and there are things that uh, are not making sense to them, what would you say? Yeah, in fact, uh, times are really hard because uh, we have children who are well educated but no, with no jobs. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, like a university, uh, in fact, even even the primary education earlier on was enough to get you a job. Mm -hmm. uh, things have changed drastically. Yes. Such that there are so many graduates without jobs. Mm -hmm. It needs, uh, so people are really to adjust to the idea of a job. Yes. And, and think of uh, what kind of self-employment uh, can somebody can try mm -hmm. so it's no longer the guaranteed job after yes. right, with a degree certificate mm -hmm. yes. and, and as you said when we were graduating mm -hmm. in fact the public service commission came to interview us at the university and you were choosing what which career you want mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was completely different. I think that's why sometimes I say God really loves me because <laughs> if if I had to pay even for my university education, I would not have been able to do it. That time, there is the government which was encouraging people to go to university. Yes. And they were, they were paying. In fact, from Form 5. Yes. I remember, I remember from five and six who are free mm -hmm. together with the university. Okay. The situation has completely changed and uh, there is every graduate that is struggling. Mm -hmm. And uh, is struggling to get a job or to fix something. Yes. We have thousands and thousands of unemployed graduates. And that is not good. Awesome. Uh, there is something which their mentality change mm -hmm. as to occur. Yes. So that so that people know that uh, it's not always that you get a job, but you have to find something. To do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is uh, the situation we are in. I can uh, I can imagine. I can see Julius has raised his hand. Uh, Julius, you can say uh, what you wanted to say. Then we get to hear from. Uh, Daktari after that, Julius and Frasia. Thank you, thank you, uh, um, Chungaji. I, yes. I want to speak from where last speakers uh, just left. Yes. There are biggest problem is not education. Yes. Biggest problem is the mindset. Mm -hmm. and actually, the job in our country are the education. Yes. The uneducated as, are not as much jobless as the educated. And uh, it comes back from, uh, from it goes back to, I think, the colonial times because when the Mzuku came around. Yes. And he wanted workers. Mm -hmm. He kind of uh, gave us this mindset that uh, he started training people to work in his farms, in his um, offices, and so on and so forth, and in his uh, companies. Yes. And so he brought this narrative that people are educated to get a job. And that's where we are stuck today. And I would, I would tell you that uh, if uh, I usually say, if, uh, if the educator look for opportunities, none, none of them will lack something to do. But as long as they are chasing the, the, the few jobs created by a few people, we'll always have a problem. But I will tell you that. Um, the thing that will change our country and provide jobs yes. is not jobs. Mm -hmm. It's actually uh, the people that have been educated yes. to apply critical thinking mm -hmm. 
and provide solutions. Correct. In, in every problem, there's a job. If you flip every problem, you find a job underneath. Yes. So if these educated people can go around looking for problems to solve, mm -hmm. not jobs. Yes. They will find jobs. They will find jobs because I can tell you, we have more problems to go around. We have more problems that, that we can solve. And all those problems represent jobs. Yes. For these two, if they can apply critical thinking. Mm -hmm. I, I remember in 2015, I went to Rwanda and, uh, and uh, that time I was writing my book, uh, my book, um, the, the, pre, um, the Conceive Achieve. Yes. With five principles of success. And, uh, and a lot of young men came looking for jobs and they looked very frustrated. One of them uh, lamenting the way it is so difficult to get a job in their country with his degree. Yeah. And then I caught them aside and trying to share with them a few principles of success. Mm -hmm. And I came to that point where I, I told them um, um, that uh, change your mindset from jobs to opportunities. Yes. And, uh, and I told them for every problem, there's an opportunity. Then, then, then he challenged me. He told me like now, uh, how do you create a job from joblessness? You know? There's joblessness. How do I create a job from that? And then I asked him, um, what did you do in your college? He was uh, an IT graduate. Mm -hmm. I told him, maybe you can see how you can solve joblessness using your IT. For instance, uh, finding a job is the problem. Yes. Uh, but there could be a job somewhere. As you look for it here, there could be a job somewhere. Yeah. How to connect that job with the problem? Maybe if you thought critically, you could create a platform where the job seekers and jobs can meet. It was, it was such, you know? Yeah, yeah. If our educated people mm. can stop looking for jobs and start looking for opportunities, and not just opportunities, uh, problems that they can solve and then charge, yeah. that would be a great thing. Sure. As I finish, let me, I will give you an example, another example as I finish. Yeah. I, I remember sometime back, uh, somebody gave me a call and she told me she's depressed because she's retiring. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know what to do in her retirement. She, these days, people retire so strong. Yeah. The, so she was retiring and worrying now, what would I do? I, of course, she will have a pension, but she was wondering now. What else can I do at least to keep myself busy? Mm -hmm. And then I told her, just do what you're doing, but charge. Yeah. Yes. Doing what you're doing, you tra translate from uh, public to private and continue doing what you're doing because what you're doing has still demand. Yes. And, and just that alone uh, kind of opened her mindset. And she was able to continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. She just registered the company mm -hmm. and um, was an extension like me. Yeah. She would open an agrovet and a consultancy. Mm -hmm. uh, the agrovet have a place where farmers can come and you prescribe solutions to them. Yes. And then uh, the solutions are there in your shop. And she did that and she became so relevant. Yes. And so I would say the biggest problem with our young people today is mindset. Somebody is focused on a job that uh, he cannot see the opportunities around him. That's the problem. Thank you. Very sad. Thank you. Uh, so quickly, briefly, let's hear from uh, Frasia, and then I invite uh, Dr. Ueza to now uh, take us through his book and uh, what is contained in there. They don't teach that at the university. So Frasia, quickly. Thank you, thank you. I'm one of the people who never went and went an interview. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, yes, uh, companies came for us, mm -hmm. and we had opportunities to choose which yes. job is more secure, which company is more secure, which has bigger salary, and they mm -hmm. were all wooing us, you know, mm -hmm. because we had skills. And we have information, we had knowledge. 
Yes. And uh, um, and I remember we were discussing even as a class and saying in the private mm -hmm. sector, kuna security. Osarikari diko kuna security. <laughs> and uh, most of us say uh, better than the government where I work. Yes. And uh, the government never never even uh, uh, interviewed me. Mm -hmm. I was just brought a letter. Go and report in this in this uh, province, in this yes. district. You yes. already employed. I mean, it was as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Those are those years. Right yes. now, I'm having children who yeah. are jobless mm -hmm. and who thought they would be like mom or they would be like dad because maybe <laughs> because of my summer, sana that yes. uh, so many we jana <laughs> and. <laughs> Nakazi mutapata, and that is not the the the, the case. The story and anymore. And uh, Julius has said, yes, yes, that's that that that, that story ended. That story ended. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have, to me, we have a better opportunity. Those yes. days in the universities, we mm -hmm. knew we knew just a few courses. We knew teaching. We mm -hmm. knew agriculture. Mm -hmm. We knew medicine. We knew engineering. Mm -hmm. Today. There are things my children will talk about, and I don't know what 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 those things are. Acuity sciences, anganini designing. Those are not things that we knew ever existed, but those yes. are opportunities that are there. And mm -hmm. what are we saying? Somebody mm -hmm. saw a gap and realized that this gap needs to be to, to be filled. And like mm -hmm. Julius has said, today yeah. we are having a problem of mindset. Because when the children or the, the, the earlier generations are notion, yeah. even in the university, yeah, this that 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 uh, that uh, vizu, kipata grade muzuri, unapata kazi. That mm. is not the situation today. Mm. Even I'm actually challenging even the, 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 the academic institutions. Can we train for industry? You know, can we train for industry? What are the opportunities that are lying with us, and what can we do with them? And I I I. I I want to give an illustration because I, I, I know that the speaker is already on board, that, uh, that there is a, an institution that has discovered the, 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 the gap. It's called the Christian Impact Mission. In the, in the heart of Ukambani, called, a place called Diata, there is yes. a bishop there that yes. has gotten a, 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 a spiritual revelation that mm. there is a problem of mindset, not only in this country, but also in Africa. And yeah. today, that, mm. that, 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 that remote place in Iyata mm. is touching the world from Kenya. You oh. find FAO is taking their people there for mindset change. You, mm -hmm. Sudan, you know, you go there. Me, I work in a ministry that gives food to, to Kenyans yeah. in the region. But you get surprised that we are taking our officers there for mindset change. Why? Yes. Because people think that where there is job is where I'll be getting a salary. But that mm -hmm. is not the situation. That is not the truth. If, 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 if our youngsters opened their minds and identified problems, they are able to, because any problem, gives an opportunity or several opportunities come with, with a problem. And, and, and I think the mindset is what we are supposed to be addressing to ensure that, 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 uh, that uh, our people are able to identify problems and to see how to solve problems. Correct. Problems are not solved by, by papers, solved by mindset that you have a capacity Solve that problem. Mm -hmm. and if you don't have that capacity, get to class and get that. You don't have, you know, to, from, from A to Z. To solve a small problem. What you need is that skill that will be a problem. And an and, and, and opportunity for uh, us. We are, we are having a bit of a challenge uh, hearing you. Their mindset. Okay, I can't be heard. Yeah, now you're clear. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I'm saying that we need we need to see how to solve the issue of mindset with our young generation because they cannot be where we are. Mm. Because before we exit, they have not occupied. Yes. But there are a lot of spaces that are unoccupied because there are so many problems bedeviling Africa, mm -hmm. bedeviling Kenya, yes. bedeviling so many of our sectors. Mm. And if they looked at those problems and in the, in, in, in the name of solving those problems, mm. those, those the opportunities lie there mm. and their jobs lie there. So I think the mindset change that we need is mm. that as we get our education, yeah. Our education should help us to solve problems for Africa, for Kenya, for the world. And mm -hmm. once we do that, we'll be in for it. And I thank God because COVID brought a problem. And the ones, the youth that were able to open their eyes, today they are earning big. And today Kenya is being, you know, uh, 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 counted. As, uh, among the big 10 in the world on issues ICT. And it is mm. because some youths opened their eyes and saw mm. a problem and dis mm. discovered ways of solving problems while people are seated at home. Today yes. we can do very many things because mm. somebody saw a problem and God had to allow us to get into a problem for people to start thinking. And I think it is a high time we pushed our our, our, our children network 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 king so getting a job because as you solve a problem okay um Thank you, thank you for that uh, fresh year. And now let me uh, have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Daniel Rueza. Um, Dr. Daniel Rueza is the author of They Don't Teach That at the University. Um, we, 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 we started the discussion because uh, we were having a bit of an issue uh, with his connection, but uh, I now want to allow him to take it away by telling us uh, more about uh, this book and uh, what insights he has uh, in there for us uh, in the next uh, 20 or so minutes. And then we, we can ask whatever questions we have and uh, whatever other reactions that uh, might come out of it. So uh, without much further ado, Dr. Ruezo, you can unmute and uh, proceed. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Samuel, and uh, to everyone who is here. Um, as, as you were sharing, it, it was very clear that I am going to preach to the converted, and <laughs> there may be nothing useful, like we say in our legal jargon, there may be nothing useful to add uh, to, 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 to what you already know. But, no, but the, 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 the people, uh, the people, the people here might be converted. Some of them, but I know there is something that uh, <laughs> you can share, and uh, this is also going to be heard by other people who are not here. So definitely, we want to hear yeah. what you have to say. All right, all right. No, but this is just to applaud uh, the comments that have already been made. I think they are on the on the on the mark of what my uh, my views are. Okay. So um, last week, my 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 second born daughter bought a new phone. Now mark my words, she bought a new phone, okay. um, uh, which, which came to about seven hundred you got seven hundred thousand Ugandan shillings. Uh -huh. Now seven hundred thousand Ugandan shillings is probably the salary that many people earn, uh, you know, in, in the country. Um, and, and you know, we we like like some people in Kenya, we live over you you know live on a dollar a day for those who are extremely poor. And and you, when you ask the question, how did she do this? Um, she she just started being uh, practicing austerity, you know. 
Uh, mm. You give her money for pocket money, she saves it. Mm. Um, I have a son in quotation marks who sells watches. Uh, yes. He's just a student at the university and he gets, he got to know my family and he said, I'm going to call you dad and I'll call my, he calls my wife, mom. And, mm. and he says, hey, why, whatever money you have, Darlene, Darlene is her name. She give it to me, let, invest in my business and I'll pay you back. And over the period, uh, she's been investing in this guy's business wow. and uh, she's been able to buy uh, a phone. And for those of us who are Christians, uh, the scripture says that to whom who much is given, mm. uh, a lot is expected. But, yes. but, but even the person who, who uses their talent very well, more mm. is given to them. So the other day, my, my sister who stays abroad, just sent her more money because my, my daughter wanted to buy clothing and was wondering whether she should use her money to buy clothing or to um, uh, or, or to buy this phone that she has been targeting to buy over a period of time. Mm. And, and, and maybe the, the other part of the story is that um, at some point, one of our house helps uh, left the home and had stolen my daughter's money. So she started from scratch again uh, to save and she served diligently, and so we are extremely proud uh, of her. I'm proud now, of her too. If, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now if, you, if you think about it, um, you start asking the question, how did this little girl, how did this young lady begin to do some of these things? And, and, and some of the, of the ideas that I share in this book um, uh, are based on stories such as hers. The other story I can share with you is of a, a recent graduate uh, from yeah. our law school who, having finished the bar course uh, a, a, a year after finishing the university, came mm. to me and says, what do I do now? Give me some advice. Yeah. And, and I was like, wait a minute. You've finished your law degree, you've done the bar course, and you're not sure about what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know? Of course, I thought you wanted to go and practice the law. That's why you've been choosing all these courses. Yes. Uh, but it came out clearly for me that many times we, 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 we move around in the education system mm -hmm. like headless chicken, just oh. being ushered into this conveyor belt that is churning out degrees of people who... Uh, like our sister was saying, uh, turn out to be unemployed. Now, one of the things my daughter has been doing is that she has been plating hair. She yeah. invites her friends over and plates their hair and charges them some small monies, you know? And I was like, what? You're doing this? This is amazing, you know? Um, yes. But you can see someone who is beginning to develop a business mind mm. uh, and making use of whatever little talent uh, yes. that she has over uh, over 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 the time. Mm. Okay. So so the, the the book we don't teach that at the university is really inspired by conversations I have had with mentors of mine but also experiences that I have gone through especially when it comes to finding what is your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. I have realized that um that 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 without purpose without a vision it is true that people perish. And many times we've had all these fancy words, vision, purpose, values, and you're like, yeah, 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 and you tick the box of them, but we don't have an honest conversation with mm -hmm. ourselves regarding whether or not we actually uh, have a vision, we actually have a purpose, and is there anybody who will guide us in that conversation? Mm -hmm. But like, like some of you have, have mentioned, the education system that we have gone through was meant for a specific purpose as well. Mm -hmm. And that purpose, by and large, has been achieved. The colonial masters, when they were teaching us, they taught when they had a specific intention in their hearts. Yes. They wanted to turn out a certain type of educated person who would mm -hmm. help them continue to do what their um, their colonial machine wanted, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I came across a quotation of someone called Thomas Macaulay uh, writing about the, in, the education system in India, and he says, the ultimate goal of colonial education is we must at present do our best 
to form a class who may be interpreters between us and the millions whom we govern, a class of persons, Indian in blood and color, but English in taste, in opinions, in morals, and in intellect. So you can see um, we, 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 we privilege the fact that we speak English more than we privilege the fact that we can speak Swahili. And that is very true for us in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So colonizing governments realized that they needed to gain strength, not necessarily through physical control, but mm -hmm. through mental control. Mm -hmm. So the mental control is implemented through a central intellectual location, which is the school system. Mm -hmm. You know, and so yes. a person privileges getting an education and mm -hmm. then stays home unemployed, frustrated, and suicidal. You know, Sad. now because of that, you find students, in my experience at the university, struggling to have a university education, mm -hmm. getting a degree, and thereafter not knowing what to use that degree from. Mm -hmm. And that is why the famous, let me call him East African author, Ngugi Wathiongo, mm -hmm. in his book, Decolonizing the Mind, yes. then writes and says, the process of this education annihilates, annihilates a people's belief, a people's belief in their names, in their languages, mm -hmm. in their environment, in their heritage of struggle, in their unity, in their capacities, and ultimately in themselves. Mm -hmm. It makes them see their past as one wasteland of non-achievement, and it makes them want to distance themselves from that wasteland, and it makes them want to identify with that which is farthest removed from themselves. So you see Ngugi was Yongo is challenging us to decolonize our minds. Mm -hmm. Indeed, one of the, the culture shocks I had was when I left Makere University and working at a, a corporate law firm in Uganda, and I was proud by the fact that it was one of the leading corporate law firms, and there was some kind of, uh, of, of pressure, peer pressure to drive a Mercedes-Benz. Mm -hmm. I actually did drive it, but it came at such a high cost <laughs> until I had to abandon it. But when I got to Makere, to to, to to the University of Cambridge to do my master's degree. Yes. My lecturers are riding bicycles. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. they, they, they are walking on the pavements. Yeah. They are dressed down. Mm -hmm. They can sit and have a cup of tea with... Now, these are the people we are supposed to emulate, but their prime ministers are riding the trains in the underground and so on and so forth. And you're like, wait a minute. What <laughs> is this full aid that I was sold? Mm -hmm. that is totally different from the reality that I am seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, a friend of mine was driving a Mercedes one time and, 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 and his wife was pregnant yeah. and she wanted to buy a snack from, uh, you know, the nearby, the, the roadside sellers. And my friend could not get out of his Mercedes in his suit to be mm -hmm. seen, to be paying for this roadside snack, you know? <laughs> And he had to start looking for ways and excuses. But of course, when you have a pregnant wife with you, you have to, to either do what she says or, 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 or the highway, you know? <laughs> now, but that is an example of showing how we have been living artificial lives. Now, yes. in, COVID, in COVID, in the COVID season, one mm -hmm. of the things that came out in Makerere and, and for our students in Uganda that, we, that I began to notice was mm -hmm. that we had more suicidal cases. Actually, we lost a student at Makere University who thought she had failed her law course for the third time. Before the results came, she couldn't take the pressure and, and, and killed herself. Oh, sad. So more mental health cases and more suicidal uh, uh, cases coming up. Uh, and mm -hmm. that shows you that, that COVID-19 was what I wrote about in my book when I was talking about the fact that the world has changed drastically. Mm -hmm. I write and say that we live in a VUCA world, that the world is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. The mm -hmm. things that you assume the world to be is not that. 
uh-huh. you know, mm-hmm. volatile, meaning that what you think is, is stable is no longer stable. Mm-hmm. Change is constant and change is faster, more frequent, less certain than ever before. Yes. So this book uh, strives to provide some principles and approaches to deal with the dizzying pace of change. Mm-hmm. I mean, who knew that Zoom would be the method of communication for us? I love that, that VUCA acronym. Have... Exactly. You know? I mean, who knew that Zoom would be the thing? Who knew that people can even graduate using uh, uh, via Zoom and all these uh, online platforms? Yes. Clearly, I personally did not know this at the time. I, started, that I, was... I, I personally started using Zoom during the corona season. You can imagine. <laughs> can imagine. I had no yeah. idea about Zoom. At least Skype we had used way, way in the past. Yes. But Zoom yes. Uh, yes. was totally new yes. for me. And now those who were ready at that time for change, people like the creator of Zoom just started reaching in the millions, you mm. know, because they were ready. So mm. in the book, I, I, I say that, that for us to be able to survive in this world, we mm. must be ready for change. Mm. And I think the ladies get it to an extent because for them, unlike us gentlemen, a woman will try out a new hairstylist every week if she had the money to do so, you know? She will try out a new hairstyle, a new dress, a new shoe, a new perfume. She will try out. But for mm-hmm. people such as, as, I mean, I'll talk about myself, mm-hmm. I, I am still using the same barber or at least the same barber shop, you know, or the same barber fraternity that I used when I was on campus. You know, and I yes. have to drive to him. Can you imagine? And my wife keeps wondering, why must you drive to that place? But because of the connection you have, mm. you know. Mm. In fact, during lockdown, I didn't have my hair trimmed <laughs> because I, I did not want to go anywhere else. But the reality was that the world has had changed and mm. has changed and is going to continue Changing. changing. Mm. The subjects we are teaching at the university today are totally different. You know, one of the students, one of my students criticized me. Um, one of my students in his final year criticized me. And, and he said that, why do I always keep asking students about the case for reform whenever I'm giving them coursework tests? Mm. Why don't I write about it? And Mm -hmm. in my mind, I was like, yeah, you want me to write about the case for reform so that you will Xerox the very thing that I have said. But that is not it. I want you to remain in a constant state of knowing reform is going to happen. Mm -hmm. One of the things, for example, of reform is that in law, there is something called corroboration. Corroboration means additional independent evidence that supports the existing evidence. Yes. Normally with sexual offenses, allegations of sexual offenses, the the courts normally prefer that they will not convict on the word of a single witness. Because Mm -hmm. traditionally women were perceived to be liars, which of course is not true. Mm -hmm. Now, courts would say, no, you have accused someone, but bring independent evidence to show that Mm -hmm. this man actually did the deed that he said about you. Mm -hmm. But the jury students from our courts now is to the effect that it is so difficult for a woman to prove and bring additional evidence, especially for sexual offenses, which are quite secretive. Mm -hmm. That is an amendment to the way we've been doing things. That is an amendment to the way courts have been preferring additional evidence. Because now the Supreme Court has said, no, it is unfair on women to do so. So that's just one example of the constant changes that we must be in. Yes. Uganda said we don't have a base, we don't have a basic structured doctrine for our constitution. Mm-hmm. Kenya, in, in, in its decision in the in the is it B E E B B I? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. For them, they say Kenyan jurisprudence has said there is a, a basic structure 
doctrine, you know, of mm. course, those are details that I don't want to perturb you with. The point I am making is there is a constancy in change. So what do we do? In the book, I say that we need to learn, relearn, and unlearn. Oh, unlearn, relearn, and learn. Yes. Things that we have been taught, for example, I grew up thinking that if a lawyer must always wear a necktie and a suit, you know? I grew up thinking yes. that, you know, there are certain specific colors that I need to wear. Lawyers don't drive any kind of vehicle. They must always drive a Mercedes Benz and so on. Hey. That stuff has to be changed. Mm. First of all, our roads are not going to make it easy for us to drive these low-cost vehicles unless we want to go to <laughs> the garages so you what the stuff we have been taught has got to change mm. unlearn relearn change should be like the greeks i don't know if any of you here have read the odyssey of homer or you've heard about the odyssey of homer when the greeks were trying to confront a, a, a mystic a mystical or mythical fi figure called the old man of the sea that kept on changing from a from a tree into fire into a lion into a, a snake and so and so forth. now for them to overcome mm -hmm. the greeks had to keep on whenever he would change into a snake they would hold on to the snake they changes into a tree they hold on to the tree they never let go until they defeated the old man of the sea so in the book i talk about it and say change is inevitable mm -hmm. you know the other day my son was looking at me and looking at some of my beards and saying daddy you have a gray one you have a gray one i said yes i have a gray one now my wife was saying what happened to you i married you when you are smooth skinned in the chin now you have some bits of beards and i'm like yes change is inevitable mm -hmm. we must prepare change you yes know? yes who knew that you and i would be having this conversation at mm. this hour, without me having to travel to Nairobi first, mm. you know? Though, though, though I'm going to bring you to Nairobi one of these days. One of these days, indeed, <laughs> you know? But you can see we are having these conversations across yes. the, 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 the airways. Yes. Now, I, 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 I challenge and say we not, that, that one, we must accept that what we understand today may not even be applicable tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The Zoom technology of today may not be there, there tomorrow. Yes. There may be something even much better. Mm -hmm. Two, be adaptive and agile. Yes. Accommodate changes when they appear rather than if they appear. When mm -hmm. a change comes, accommodate it. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. it's not today, but you have to, you know. Yes. Then I say that anticipate and embrace change rather than keeping the current status quo and say, no, we must stay like this. It is not possible anymore. Mm -hmm. But the book, is also, the book has that clear thought for the mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, you can call it the theoretical framework in the book is, are we ready for change? Mm -hmm. are, do we know the kind of world where we are living right now? Mm -hmm. I even identify and say, for us who are teaching, do we know the kind of people we are teaching? You know, we are not teaching necessarily millennials. Okay, yes, they are millennials. Yes. But do we not we understand what we mean by millennials? Hey, what millennials. makes a millennial? Yeah, are millennials as, as, um, as, as traditional as us? Are mm -hmm. they, are they, uh, are they, do they stick to you? Probably not. Millennials will change their allegiance at any time, you know? They mm -hmm. have different priorities. When you hear things like so-and-so has been at a job for the last 30 years, a millennial will say, what? You mean you don't know about variety? How can you be at a job for such a long time? You know, don't you have other options? You know? Yes. Now, I, 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 then, so now let me go very quickly because I know our time is fast spent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can be bringing it to a close because I know there is yeah. a lot you can say, uh, but our time is limited. Yes, yes. So, 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 in my first chapter, which I think is the most critical chapter of this book, I challenge us to consider carefully what our vision, mission, and purpose is, mm -hmm. because it is that which guides us. 
Mm. I then start teaching or talking about those things the university doesn't talk about, mm. in addition to what I've just said. Things such as attitude, your mm. attitude determining your altitude, mm. your network being your network, mm. the value of mentorship, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, things such as having a thick skin. I talk mm. about thick skin. I talk about grit, the ability to hold on to something. You mm. have a four-year, five-year course of architecture like my wife did. Mm. Staying the course. Your friends are graduating after three years. You have two more years to go. Staying <laughs> the course. You know, developing a thick skin. When you have, when you, you when, when, um, when you're criticized, are you able to take it in? Do you have emotional intelligence? Mm. I actually argue that emotional intelligence is so critical that in certain workspaces, it has become more important yes. than what is in the papers. You know, true, you may come with uh, a first class degree, but you have no emotional intelligence. Mm. Nobody is ready to, to, to accommodate you. No. And and among the other things I talk about, I mean, I talk, I say a few more things, but one of the things I talk about is living holistically. Mm. That is by investing in the five capitals. I think the book written by mm. Mike Brin, he, he says invest uh, financially. Mm. And so I have I've, I've start, I've started a, a, a savings group for the for for the fellowship of law students, mm. the Christian fellowship of law students. I've told them you have to start saving. Now yes. they, have, they have started saving about. 20,000 shillings per month, which is a little and about $7 a month because they are, they are still uh, young people, but just developing the financial the discipline, the discipline. discipline. Yes. So invest financially. That is financial capital. Two, physical mm. capital. What you eat, um, how healthy you want to live. Mm. Uh, and I told them for me, it's also a journey in, in progress. I, 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 I take a walk with friends every Saturday. I, I try to watch what I eat. Um, I am not yet perfect at that, but that is important, physical mm. capital. Mm. The mm. number three, I talk about spiritual capital. Yeah. Spiritual. Where are we investing our, our, our time? You know, I talk about knowing what your true north is. You, you know, your true north is like on your campus, guiding you where you need to go. Mm. I tell them my true north is Jesus Christ, my Lord yes. and Savior. Yes. And, and I tell the reader that you all need a true north because that is what cements your value system. Mm. And then I talk about intellectual capital. What are we reading? And I'm happy I'm part of this group that, that is full of authors and readers and so on. What are you reading? You know, I, I remember telling um, a young man, a rotor actor, about reading and, and, and he says that, does, does your book have pictures? <laughs> it is not all Ugandan rotaractors like that. But, but this young man, when he says, does your book have pictures? I just want one that has pictures so that I look at the pictures. I was yes. so sudden. I was so sudden. Because clearly, like John Maxwell says, that is going to be the lead for that man. He cannot mm -hmm. go beyond that lead that he has created for himself. Mm -hmm. If you if you want to lead, you must read. So I, I insist on that. And, yeah. and one of the things students have, what this other young man criticized me for in his post, he said that I'm I'm, I'm wasting their valuable time, you know, preaching at them and, and, and telling them how men can be, how boys can become men and so on and so forth. But I know what I am doing. I yeah. know that where I am today because of the books uh, that, that, that I have read, you know, um, and then I talk about the relational capital, which, which I have already shared, relational, your network is your network. So yeah. uh, let's let stop at this. By God's grace, you will probably get a copy of the book and read it and engage me further. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So maybe uh, before I allow people to say something, I can see Mutani is very excited. I know he has he, he has something to say. Uh, before I open that up, uh, maybe you can tell us if someone is looking for your book, a copy of your book, uh, where can they look and uh, how can they get in touch with you? 
All right. Maybe they also so, maybe they also just want to invite you uh, into a forum of some sort or uh, like yeah. myself. I, I I guarantee you, I'm going to bring you to Nairobi uh, to yeah. uh, when the time is right. So Amen. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So so what I have been doing with uh, some of my Kenyan brothers is that we organize and uh, they say, oh, I want two copies. Then I put them on the bus. Yeah. Uh, and then the copies come to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I've also told them that there is a there is a copy on um, Amazon Kindle for those who are more hip uh, yeah. and more stylish. They want to use their their phones and their other gadgets. So those are mm -hmm. the two options I've been giving. Um, either um, I, I send it to somebody on 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 a, a, any bus that they think they, there is a bus system anyway that I use. Yeah. Uh, especially for my, my the brethren in Kenya, mm -hmm. um, the book the book costs just ten dollars. It's it's that mm -hmm. cheap, uh, yeah. and then we we agree on maybe the transportation costs for the bus, yeah. and then someone picks it up from the bus, or they do the Amazon Kindle version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. but but awesome. Reverend Sam, you have my number now, so you. You, I'm sure you can track me down. I can't hide anymore from you. <laughs> <laughs> Never, yeah. you, you can't. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, someone is asking what's the title of your book. Maybe you can show it as you also say it. Yeah, so the title of the book is We Don't Teach That at the University, Confessions of a University Don. Now, many people were very excited about what I'm going to confess in the book. They thought maybe I was playing around with young ladies and things like that. But uh, yeah, confessions, <laughs> of, we don't teach that at the university, confessions of a university don't. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, right about now, I want to start with Mutani and... Uh, if you are there and you also want to say something brief uh, uh, about the discussion, kindly feel free to do so. Uh, but for now, um, Motani. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And um, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Terry. Um, well, the, today's, today's, uh, today's topic spoke to my heart in so many ways. First, because I also work for a university. I am in academia. Yeah. I, I I work with the youth as a boy child advocate, and most importantly, now that uh, Dr. is an advocate, and I'm also a law student as we speak. Wow. And so when 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 we when especially the the what what has gotten to me mostly was um, the issue of change and how quickly we adapt to change. And it's like they are reading from the same script with um, Dr. Spencer. Spencer, this little book um, is called Who Moved My Cheese? Yes. And I'm yes. thinking, yes. I, I'm yes. thinking <laughs> we are in the universities, yes, and we are training these young people, but are we really changing um, that fast? Um, when when, when Frasha was talking before, before uh, Dr. Terry came in, she was talking of um, training for the industry. But um, after Dr. Terry has spoken, I'm also wondering, are we, are we sure that we can train for the industry? Because four years is a, is a long time and it's also a short time for the industry. So um, bottom line is the attitude issue that we are talking about. We are not, and, and this is my take home that we need to train on change, mm -hmm. the monitoring of change, and um, what I would call the anticipation of change, and the speed at which we adapt to change. And, and today has just been a blessing, and I'm really going to um, reevaluate myself as, as a mentor, as a student, as a teacher, as, as, as a father, and, and as so many things, so many things. So thank you, thank you very much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank uh, you. Fra Frasia says, uh, great insights, Dr. Uh, indeed, those insights aren't taught at the university. 
So he <laughs> he agrees with the, the title of your book completely. Yes. Yes. I, uh, I, I actually thank you very much. Uh, oh, sorry. Maybe Go ahead. after. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I wanted to say that uh, I think in one of the concluding chapters, I actually even talk about love, sex, and relationships. Mm -hmm. Because these are really the experiences that students, um, uh, I mean, I can't, I can no longer tell you how many students have approached me mm -hmm. uh, just to discuss love, sex, and relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then I realized, my goodness, we, we are teaching the law, but mm -hmm. people have real issues regarding, oh, I lost my virginity to so-and-so, I can no longer read in the classroom, uh, he is going off or she is going off with someone else, what can I do, you know? Um, how are we going to, to help them? Now, I am not a, a certified counselor, but clearly, if you are in such a university space and someone is coming to you and asking for advice, yes. you're not going to know I'm just a teacher of the law. You know, mm -hmm. if you go to a counselor, mm -hmm. no, this person has sought your professional help. They've seen your journey. They see the ring on your finger and say, it seems you're a married man. Mm -hmm. How are you handling this? Yeah. It's not on the syllabus. It's not in family law. Besides, family law now is is totally destroying the concept of family as we understand it in the Christian circles. Mm. Am I going to step back? No. I have to step in and say, hey, guys, this is my idea of what family should be, and these are the reasons why. You know, yeah. So one of the things I've started doing to answer Rotarian Mutani, I have started a conversation called Manhood versus Maleness, the Manhood versus Maleness conversation, which I do like once a semester. Yeah. Uh, but I, but during lockdown, we try to do like twice a month. But the idea there is to help young boys, mm -hmm. young men, once again reconsider the, the word responsibility mm -hmm. in everything they do, how they dress, how they prepare for marriage, how they relate. Where is that conversation? Because we've invested a lot in the girl child, but the girl child now does not find fitting husbands because the husbands are ill-prepared. And so that is another space. I mean, we may not have time to talk about it here, but yeah. in my chapter nine, I say just a little bit uh, about that and, 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 and what I am trying uh, to do uh, in that regard. So, 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 so if we are talking about training for industry, we must also talk about training for family. Because if you don't train someone for family, then however well prepared they are for industry, uh, they will struggle in the family and it will then be a struggle in the industry, you mm. know? So, uh, and so the two must come uh, side to side, uh, side by side that we begin to train. And one thing I'm seeing, even the concept of how we do church these days has to change. You know, there's a book I read, Why Men Hate Church. You know, that's a conversation which I'll have one day by someone called uh, Marrow, David Marrow, Why Men Hate Church. And, mm -hmm. and I realized, my goodness, we need to have a conversation on how do we make church relevant for fathers, for boys, for men, as it is relevant for the ladies. Mm -hmm. You know? Otherwise, yeah. if it is not, then men stay away from church. And when men stay away from church, it means that almost 80% of the family stays away. I was telling my colleague who has recommitted himself to be more involved in church, I said, you see, when you started coming early in the morning to the church and beginning to serve at the reception desk, your mm -hmm. two children have joined you, mm -hmm. you know, and they are tagging along wherever you go. If you had continued to stay at home and driving off as soon as you are done with church, they would not. But now that you as the man have determined to be involved more, you see, your kids are already in ministry now. And it has taken a space of just two to three weeks for the mm -hmm. kids to plug in. When he was not plugged in, the kids were not plugged in. As soon yes. as he plugged in, the mm -hmm. kids also. Uh, came in. So I know I have diverted a little bit from our conversation, but 
anyway, it's also in the book. <laughs> um, I, I am laughing because uh, two weeks from now, we are going to be talking about uh, the boy child with Mutani here. Yeah. So I think that's a conversation you must make sure you join. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, will be, it will be interesting because definitely there's a lot that needs to be done uh, to set the boy child on... On, on a course that would uh, help them really function in today's society. Mm. Mutani's, Mutani's book, uh, Mutani's book uh, is uh, If I Had a Son, and uh, he says, we, we raise our daughters and let our sons, let our sons do what Mutani, grow. <laughs> <laughs> let our sons grow. Wow. Yes, we, we raise our daughters, but we let our sons grow, which is uh, mm. really unfortunate. So uh, mm. right about now, my time is really uh, running out. If we are going to hear comments from uh, Favor, Jimmy, uh, it's going to be maybe 30 seconds max or so, so that uh, we bring this to a close. This conversation is very interesting. It can go on for another whole hour. <laughs> So, Fever, if you have uh, something to say about today's conversation, please feel free to do so. Then we hear from Jimmy. Hi, Sam. Hi. Well, I don't have anything per se, just to say that I'm burning a lot and I'm really grateful for, for this chance and to thank our you. speaker too. Very insightful. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us, and we are glad that uh, you're learning something. Uh, be sure to join us again next Monday. There'll be something else uh, going on as well. Jimmy, thank you. Uh, I think identifying the five capitals, mm -hmm. uh, the new one being intellectual and relational capital. Yeah and how they fit into this aspect that sometimes these aren't, aren't things you will be taught mm -hmm. by anyone, that emotional intelligence is important. Yep. Yes, I think that's part of my key takeaways. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you so much for that, uh, Jimmy. I appreciate uh, your being here as well. Um, I think uh, what you're going to do is uh, I will request uh, Mutani to actually uh, make a concluding prayer for us. And unless somebody has something which they feel they really must say. Uh, we had heard from uh, Gideon and uh, Frasia uh, prior to uh, our guest speaking to us. So except the two of them have something really key that they would want to say, uh, we allow Mutani to pray so that we bring this to a close. So what I would say is that actually the book by Dr. Rueza is it's a good book. I can hear it <laughs> Yes, already, although I've not read it. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, it's a dynamic, there's dynamism in all, in the so social dynamism. Yeah. Which uh, even parents who are not able to cope up with, with their children. Yeah. They are in different worlds, actually. True. Particularly with the internet and all these things. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, you can never confine your child into a village. They are actually international characters. <laughs> <laughs> so if we don't also broaden our mind, then we remain outdated. In fact, I, right. and I realized recently that if you are in the old, uh, they no longer call you analog, but they call you BC before Christ. <laughs> so we are, <laughs> you are, you are, <laughs> you are <laughs> the parents have to be up to date. You know, you, you don't know, you know, you are in BC, you are really completely out of touch mm -hmm. with what is going on, you know. Social, they said a lot of dynamic development 
Mm. As you say, it even Zoom is just the other day. Okay, I also started seeing it last year. So the world is as a village now. Mm. So we have to change. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Them. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that, Gona uh, Gideon. Mutani. Uh, I'm hoping uh, Frash and um, Webby and Julius are okay so that we pray. Uh, Julius left, uh, but uh, Frasha is here, so I, I want to believe uh, she's okay. If not, uh, she can say something, then go ahead and pray. All right. I want to totally uh, agree with Dr. Tari that uh, as we train for industry, we must train for family. I agree that uh, family is a very unique unit, a unit that actually creates industry, yeah. a unit that creates enterprises, mm -hmm. a unit that creates church, yeah. a unit that creates society, mm -hmm. and a unit that creates nation and nations. All right. It's very critical. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frasha. All right, shall we pray? Sure. Um, thank you, thank you, Jehovah, for bringing us into this space and time. And we are really glad that uh, you gave us this chance or you brought us here for such a word as this. Thank you for using your, your, your servant, Dr. Rueza. And thank you for giving us the chance, the time, the energy to be part of this. Thank you for challenging us because this is what we needed. This evening, this is what we lacked. And Lord, you filled our cup to our fullness. We want to give you the glory. As even as we get back uh, to our schedules and, and find our spaces and continue impacting nations as you sent us. We want to thank you. We want to celebrate you and Lord, we want to pray that this movement, this direction that you have given us today, that Lord, you shall enable us to keep the fire burning till the day you call us. Lord, each and every one of us here is a representation of a nation, a space that you have given us to conquer, a space that you have given us to work in. Lord, may you feel, may you fuel our desires, Lord. May you, may you fill our cups, Lord. And as we go on, as we continue spreading to the nations, Lord, we may impact the, the industry. We may give the industry what you require of it. Lord, we thank you and we honor your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank, Amen. thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you, Dr. Tari. Uh, it was a real pleasure uh, being with you. We Thank hope to so have many more conversations in future. Amen. Thank you so much for having me and have